welcome this morning. It is good to be with you on this Easter Sunday. It is risen as the rains. My name is Pastor Moses Barrios, and my pronouns are he, him, and his. I'm an indigenous American of my name is Sunday, and the senior pastor of Calvary. It is good to have you this morning. I want to say to those who are visiting for the first time, whether here for the first time or on campus or online, you must know a few things. For what you are welcome. You are safe, you are loved, and God is loved. This morning I pray for the people of New York City, those directly and indirectly affected by the broken subway attack. For the people of Tigray, of the Providence in Ethiopia, people in Yemen, Afghanistan, Ukraine, Syria, experiencing injustice and oppression as we sit here this morning. For the numerous migrants and migrant families arriving to our nearest U.S. border this morning, seeking asylum and protection. It was the second semester of my senior year in high school, a long time ago, when I arrived to my scheduled first period class. My teacher told me, Moses, you can transfer to a new class, American government. Good. I promptly took my transfer slip, walked towards my new class, entered the room, providing my teacher with a new transfer slip, and he looked at me and stared at me. Eventually, he smiled and told me to take a seat. I went on to sit down. I did not know anyone in the class. I sat quietly, listened to the teacher. But you have to understand something about this moment. I was not Pastor Moses. I was just Moses, a typical teenage guy, trying to be cool, right? Trying to be cool for everybody, but that's who I was. A few weeks into the class, the teacher assigned our first major assignment, a civic action project. I remember being fascinated by this project, so much so that I asked my best friend, who eventually became my brother-in-law, Brenda's brother, to be my camera guy, and I wrote down some thoughts, I wrote out a script, and we decided to focus my project on tackling city, tackling city issues like litter and property abandonment and property building. I drove around the city, filled myself speaking about such issues and possible solutions, turned in my video, turned in my written report, and I was done. So I thought. My teacher was so surprised, so excited, proud of my work, that he asked me, can I keep your video and report so to share it as an example to all my future classes? I was like, of course, sure, yeah, go ahead. I ended up facing my class the flying colors, I would say. But on the last day of class, my American government decides to pass out these student awards to everyone in the class. And there's the best this and the best that, and the most likely to this, most likely to that. And then the last award came. He looked at me and said, But don't judge a book by its cover. Goes to Moses, right? Uh, I realized that day that I may look a certain way from the outside, but that there is something more than even my outward. In fact, I've lived through these kinds of dynamics all my life, even within the church. And I know how it feels, so I can quickly identify it. It is both in joy. I titled today's sermon, To Dream Away. After walking through this journey known as Holy Week, Palm Sunday, Monday, Thursday, Good Friday, and now Easter Sunday, it has been said that to be a Christian is to believe in the power of the resurrection of Jesus, to share it with others. What is the power of the resurrection? I'll keep that question at hand because we will return to it, but today we begin with the original first Christian Sunday, 
the way. Wake up early, go to the tomb. And when they get to the tomb, they are very much prepared to anoint the body of Jesus with fragrances and spices. But to their surprise, what would happen? The stone has been rolled away from the tomb. The body of Jesus is no longer there. Two men appear, bright clothing, to the women and say, Why do you look for the living among the dead? He is the tear that has been raised. The women return to share this astonishing news, notified the eleven disciples and the entire community, but they didn't believe the word. In fact, the Greek word for how the disciples received the news was something known as leiros. Leiros, which means nonsense, foolish talk. Or according to you know, theologian William Barclay, he says, meant to describe the battle of a fever and insane mind. Are you kidding? But only Peter, somewhat believed the news, ran to the tomb and suffered himself an empty tomb and walked away. Because this morning is an invitation to all of us. It doesn't matter where you come from, what your tradition, your experience, your religious beliefs, your ideology, color of your skin, your gender, identity. There is something that is just wisdom and it is universal in this world. But how can someone catch this wisdom and catch this universal truth if one is if one is not true or So this morning, this is where we invite the Holy Spirit, the one that has come to counsel, comfort, guide, help, pray for us. Holy Spirit is an advocate for us. When we come and say, Holy Spirit, let us be a true, let us be awake, let us be fully present. You know, Moses got to the top of the mountain, and God said to them, God said to Moses, when you get to the top, be fully there. Well, that's a bit redundant, but the reality is it was a call to be fully in the moment, to in this moment, to catch the wisdom. Let us come and be fully present. Whatever your doubts and fears, your concerns, your burdens, whatever is heavy on your heart this morning, this is what you bring it. You bring it to God. You bring it to the divine. And you allow the divine to speak back into you. Because today's wisdom is central to human life. And here it is. The power of the resurrection is expansive. With the power of the resurrection is expansive. With Let me explain it to you a bit. The raising up of Jesus is not a one-time anomaly that somehow proves that Jesus is God. Rather, it is a statement about the paradox of life. Because life and death will always coexist alongside each other. Did you think? It will always be Good Friday and Easter Sunday all wrapped up in it. Always. Everything is a mystery. Everything is a paradox. And I wonder how many of us have given up an expansive rhythm because we're overwhelmed by the paradox and the mystery of everything. Because let's face it, we live in a world that doesn't make much sense. A global pandemic that doesn't make much sense. Innocent people dying and being displaced. Families migrating from faraway lands in search of help and assistance. Young people committing suicide. Mental illness falling due to COVID isolation. Black and brown bodies killed because of the color of their skin. Asian and Pacific Islander bodies being mistreated with hateful acts. Trans individuals being bullied. Mass shootings in schools and subways. There is just too many contradictory things in this world, and hardly any of it is not. Is expensive living even possible in 2022? Perhaps the dream of this narrative will offer us some hints, some openings, some glimpses about expensive living. Did you catch the three women that were presented in each gospel? Mary Magdalene, Johanna, and the Mary, the mother of Jesus. Sorry, the mother of James, not the mother of Jesus. But these were no ordinary women. No one could judge them. By their 
because they were faithful disciples of Jesus. They were present throughout the whole narrative. They were present throughout the birth of Jesus. They were present throughout all of his different uh, ministry hinges, shall we say. The cross, the crucifixion, the burial, and now at his tomb. They were profoundly tied to the whole Jesus narrative. They were the first witnesses, the first messengers, who brought back Brad, 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 the good news to the whole community. So why would God choose to entrust such unexpected news with these men and such marvelous and astonishing news? Why would God entrust that? Perhaps. God is revealing something to us this morning. God is giving us a glimpse into expensive Let's think about this. He's wearing over himself to the sea, the expansiveness of the resurrection. They did not doubt the news. They did not hesitate with the news. They received it without questioning it, they didn't challenge it. Rather, they opened themselves up to it. Nurtured the news and ushered all kinds of new possibilities. Their hope, their imagination, their hearts were expanded through the resurrection power. Because that's what Jesus' resurrection power does. It expands us. It releases us. It empowers us. But I don't want to miss what happened with the disciples. We can't just let it go because there is a lesson there as well. Unlike the women, the disciples, who were mostly men, could not open themselves up. couldn't go there. They met the moment with unbelief, with judgment. In fact, they received the news like nonsense, like foolishness. And only Peter himself encountered the resurrection power that expanded his mind, his heart, and life. I don't want you to miss this, because perhaps this is the most important piece of what I'm going to say. That expansive vision is that which I will never fully understand. That expansive living engenders in us faith. That expansive living produces in us patience. For patience is not. Jesus is very much. Patience is not. Because God will always be God will always be better. God will always be that which I do not fully understand. But I know that the same God loves me so much, holds me so tightly, so gently, that I do not need to understand. That I know that I live in a world that doesn't have an explanation for that. And that in the deepest of my faith, the deepest of what I know, I know that the power of resurrection lives in That the power of resurrection lives inside of you and I and everyone in this world, whether they are knowledge or not. But you may say to me, Pastor Moses, that sounds really good, but I just need to know. I just need to understand. I just need an explanation for it. But remember what the two men in bright clothing said to the women. Why do you look for the living among the dead? See, my sense is that many of us are looking for the living among the dead. We just need to understand. We just need an explanation for everything. And when we live like that, we are choosing doubt over faith, choosing the known over the mysterious possibilities, choosing limitedness over expansiveness. I also wonder, where do you see expansiveness? I thought about this. Where do I see expansive living? Do I see it in women? I see it in young people. I see it in the queer community. I see it in communities of color. Because how many times have their stories been dismissed by those in power or by those of the dominant culture? How many times have their stories been treated as nonsense, full of talk, and yet they keep going? 
moving forward, they keep attending school, finishing their education, they keep applying for jobs, they keep interviewing, they keep visiting the church, they keep fighting for their voices to be heard, validated, and found. This will teach us something about the power of resurrection, because resurrection is like dream or living. Listen to this. It is like living while dying. It is both enjoying and a challenge. The constant truth is that life will always be changed. Resurrection, it just keeps going. It keeps going, it keeps hope alive, even when things look hopeless. But even when, when, when you think things aren't going to turn out, resurrection keeps going. It changes everything. In fact, it rearranges everything. It opens all kinds of new possibilities. It, op- it offers a dawning of a new world order, the starting point of a brand new story, because resurrection is the apex of the Jesus narrative. The victory has been won once and for all, and now the new story. And this is why Jesus' narrative is so compelling, right? He's born into this world, served, saved, healed, right? He challenged his social, political, and religious systems of his day. Courageously lived and boldly and willingly died on a cross, took away our shame, our failures, mistakes, and transgressions, gave us his forgiveness, his successes, and his righteousness. And on the third day, he resurrected. But why? Why all this joy about a man who resurrected more than 2,000 years ago? Why all the white lilies, the celebrations, the Easter egg times, the barbecues? Why all of this hoopla? You see, I, because, I believe it's because the resurrection power of Jesus is real dangerous ever. It invites us into a new flow of everything being healed around us. It is, it is no longer a contest. It is no longer about believing the right things. Are you kidding? There is no more about looking the right way, speaking the right way, belonging to the right tribe or the right religion. It's no longer about a list of things to do or if you're going to heaven or not, saved or not, worthy or not, have made a prayer or not. You see, all of humanity, all of humanity today, receives Jesus, the positive hope and salvation of the world. Everyone receives cosmic hope. Everyone receives salvation this morning. This is why we laugh. This is why we jump for joy. This is why we celebrate Easter, because this is the power of the resurrection. Wherever you are, wherever you are in your spiritual journey, whether you consider yourself close to God, far away from God, religious or not religious, you are invited into this flow, into this family, into this place. The round dance, where the community of love, the Trinitarian God, Father, Son, and Spirit, Creator, Redeemer, Sustainer, who was and is and is to come, Encircle each other in endless love, generosity, and service. And this flow that is healing the entire world, putting it all back together again, invites each and every one of us into that place, into that flow, into that new space. See the power of the resurrection. It is a dawning of new liberation and new freedom. But what can one do with this newfound liberation and freedom? What do you do when someone's freedom gives you such a wonderful and beautiful and amazing thing? Perhaps the question we must ask ourselves this morning is what do we need to learn in order to step into new liberation, into expansive liberation? into this flow and into this new state. 
when you need to let go? Where do you need to start volunteering? Where is your voice needed in this world in this time? Is it in this church? Is it in this spiritual family? Where are your work resources best utilized in this time? Because resurrection is your soul. It confronts and opposes the justice everywhere, oppression everywhere, all forms of evil. It challenges the status quo. It challenges the unjust systems of this world because resurrection is never silent. It's quite the opposite of that. It's quite disruptive. How else will things be liberated if the resurrection is not the same? I read this morning with some poetry from a special woman. Her name is Julia Escudé. She's a Guatemalan poet, a theologian, a human rights activist. Living in the 1950s, there were years of genocide and violence in Guatemala, resulting in tens, tens of thousands of deaths, deaths of mostly indigenous people. But the power of Jesus' resurrection Held her to speak out against this massacre. She was met in resistance. They tried to kidnap her, to arrest her, even to assassinate her. Eventually, she fled into exile in 1980. And during that time, she wrote down this famous poem titled, Was I Amenazado de Resurrección? They have threatened us with us. Share just a portion of the point. What keeps us from sleeping is that they have threatened us with resurrection. Because every evening, no weary of killings and endless inventory since 1954, yet we go on the life and we do not accept their death. They have threatened us with resurrection because we have felt their inner bodies and their souls penetrating our us, dumbly fortified. Because in this marathon of hope, there are always others who believe us, who carry the strength to reach the This is the world we which does not let us see. The reason why sleep. And the wind. Join us in this vigil, and you will know what it is to dream. Then you will know how marvelous it is to be threatened with resurrection. To dream away, to watch the to live one time, and to know ourselves all the time. May we dream away from all the all the sins of society. May we dream away all the sins of The word of God, the word of life, and we all say together. Good and peaceful.